Hi, good morning. It's Councillor Glenn Gower, and I'm here at Village Square Park. A couple of things I wanted to show you this morning. First of all, right over there, it's a new bench, courtesy of the Stittsville Lions Club in their distinctive Lions yellow and blue. So another spot to sit and relax and check out what's going on here at the park. And uh, if you look a little bit more over my shoulder, there it is. You can just see in the background, there's uh, some new recycling bins here. So Village Square Park is one of several park locations this year in Ottawa where we are piloting a new recycling program. So uh, if you are using the park or walking by, uh, there's another spot where you can put your waste and uh, keep some of that material out of the landfill. So by the looks of it, there's a garbage can, a recycling bin, and also a green bin as well. So lots of options there. Um, it's a beautiful day today. This is, this is, let me get the name right, International Trails Day. And it is also National Health and Fitness Day. So what a good day to be along the Trans-Canada Trail. There's lots of people out walking their dogs, going out for a jog, riding their bikes. Uh, really got a good day to, uh, to get some exercise on the trail. I have a lot to update you on this week. Um, citywide things, national things, local things. I wanted to start just by mentioning, um, you know, last weekend, uh, there was a discovery of the mass grave site at the Kamloops Residential School and uh, flags at City Hall and other locations around the city are flying at half mass for 215 hours, representing one hour for each of the children killed. Um, it's uh, very difficult news and uh, a real tragedy for Canada, uh, a tragedy. It's part of our history. It's not something we can ignore. Uh, I've asked for the flags here at Village Square Park to be lowered as well as at um, Kavanaugh Square, which is at Hazeldean and Stittsville, Maine. I think it's important that our community be a part of this um, uh, tribute and, and remembering of the kids that were lost. It's also National Indigenous Month in June and there's all sorts of programming happening across the city. There's the Summer Solstice Festival, there is uh, programming at the library, there are some webinars and videos, um, lots of ways that you can get involved, that you can get educated, that you can raise your awareness and you can learn more about the history and culture of Canada's indigenous, indigenous people. So I invite you to do that and I'll be sharing some information throughout the month about uh, some of these activities happening in our city and in our community as well. It is also Pride Month. June is Pride Month, so an opportunity to celebrate, to learn, to accept, to love, and uh, to celebrate Pride and uh, everyone in our community. Uh, this week was also Red Shirt Day, lots of commemorative days. So Red Shirt Day was on Wednesday and uh, people were encouraged to re wear red to raise awareness about uh, disability and accessibility. So I was happy to participate in that as well. And June is Let's Bike Month. So I biked over today here to the park and I've been participating in Enviro Center's Let's Bike program. So you can go to letsbike.ca and you can sign up to participate. And they're asking you to log all of the kilometers that you do by bike for recreation or for uh, transportation. So each day this week, except for I think Thursday when it's rain, I've made a point of going out and running some errands. I usually do anyways, but trying to do it a little more than often this month. So I think I'm up to... 60 kilometers or so just from uh, some short errands around the community for groceries and uh, went and delivered some volunteer awards yesterday so great way to get around the community and check out what's going on we have a local person in our community jeff tyndall who a couple years ago started something called let's bike stittsville uh, he's an advocate for cycling here in the community and earlier this week he was presented with the bruce timmermans award recognizing um, great work in cycling advocacy and education in the city of Ottawa. So congratulations, Jeff, very well deserved. Um, and Thursday night this week was our volunteer award. So we uh, celebrated nominees and winners in six different categories. You can watch that video, please do, on my Facebook page or my YouTube page. What a, a great deserving group of community leaders. And we did it in a virtual format. We had people joining us from all over the city and uh, even a special guest from Florida joining us representing the Roger Griffiths family for whom the Roger Griffiths Memorial Citizen of the Year Award is, uh, is named for. Uh, I won't go through all the winners, but you can check out my website to, to see a list of the organizations and the people who were selected as winners this year. Congratulations to all of you, and thanks to everyone who had a role in making that uh, event a success on Thursday evening. Uh, other things happening. We've got a whole bunch of things here. That's only the first side of my card today. Lots of stuff today. Um, on Wednesday, the Transportation Committee approved a report that I put forward about lowering the speed on Fernbank Road. Uh, the speed on Fernbank Road goes from 40 kilometers here in Stittsville, heading 
heading eastward, then it goes to 60, then to 80, then back down to 60 in front of the Walmart. Um, we're seeing more development along there, more people walking along that stretch, more people cycling, and more vehicles as well. And so my report was to uh, lower the speed limit Wherever it's signed as 80 will be lowered to 60 kilometers an hour. So the committee approved that unanimously and we'll wait for final approval at council next week, but I was really happy to see that. We got news this week that cleaning up the Capitol has the green light to continue. So if you've signed up to clean up a local park, thank you. You should be getting an email or perhaps you already have about where you can pick up your garbage bags and your gloves and the other cleaning material. And uh, we'd like to get the city cleaned up by July 1st. And if you'd like to sign up your local park, maybe your family or you've got some neighbors or a workplace that'd like to participate, go to ottawa.ca do a search for cleaning the capital and you will see a tool. You can find a map and all the locations that are already spoken for and it'd be great if we could get every park in Stittsville uh, spoken for and, and uh, adopted, I guess, by a local group to do a cleanup. Just takes a few hours. We provide the garbage bags and the gloves and even graffiti cleanup kits if you'd like that. So go to ottawa.ca or go to my website for more information. We also got word with the provincial shutdown coming to an end this month. The city's going to start up the hazardous waste depot. So the first one is the last weekend of June, June 22nd or so. It's in the east end, unfortunately, Conroy Road, so a bit of a trek. But if you've got old uh, paint cans, or fire extinguishers or chemicals. Somebody emailed me the other day about ammunition. Uh, I believe you can take those to the hazardous waste depots as well. Uh, so there's one on Conroy Road at the end of June. There's going to be three or four more, more locations, including one at West Brook Road, which is on Carp near the Queensway. That'll be coming up later on this summer. So watch for that information. Got an update on the Pioneer Plains splash pad. So a couple weeks ago, as you know, we turned on all the splash pads across the city. The one that's not functioning right now, and there's, there's uh, construction fencing all around that is a Pioneer Plains. There was an issue identified a few years ago and uh, it hasn't been repaired yet. And it's a, a big source of frustration for me. It is looking unlikely that it's going to be fully repaired this year. Uh, we're trying to get it partially operational. The pipes underneath the thing have totally deteriorated. And uh, what staff believe was going to be a very simple job has turned out to be probably require a full replacement of that splash pad. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to happen this season. Uh, we are hoping to get a temporary solution for a bit, little, at least a bit of water flowing in that splash pad this summer. Uh, I guess the good news is, is we will have a brand new splash pad in place for next year. But I know that's a big concern for Jackson Trails. I'll be sharing a more formal update with timelines and information probably this week. So watch for that there. Um, speaking of Pioneer Plains, I've had a few emails lately from folks who live near Pioneer Plains Park. There are a lot of dogs and people who use that park, but dogs off leash running around. That is a, a, not an off leash park. So just a reminder for people anywhere in the community, whether you're in a park or on a trail, please respect the rules and the signage around dogs on leash or off leash. Um, there is actually a process if people are interested in converting a, and changing the rules at a park. If it's an on leash park and you think it would be good for an off leash or if it's an off leash and you think it should have on leash, there's a process the city follows in order to evaluate that. Um, email my office, be happy to share some more information. And the other reminder, and, and really I don't know why I have to keep reminding people about this, please pick up after your pets and uh, take that dog waste home with you. You can put it in your green bin. City says you can flush it down the toilet too. I, I'm not sure I've ever done that or know anybody who does, but it can go in your green bin in the bag. So uh, please pick up after your pets. This weekend is Doors Open Ottawa. Usually this happens um, in many, many buildings across the city, public buildings and heritage buildings, where you can go and explore uh, these, these interesting buildings in the community. We can't do that this year due to, due to COVID, but there is a virtual Doors Open Ottawa. So again, you can go to ottawa.ca and find the information there. Check out what the Goulburn Museum is doing. Uh, they've got a virtual tour, a virtual exhibit going on as part of Doors Open you should check out. This, um, this Tuesday, we're doing another counselor chat. Tuesday evening, 7 p.m. So I do these videos every Saturday morning and it's very one way. It's me talking to you for about 10 minutes. Well, uh, counselor chat is an opportunity for you to ask questions and for you to participate. So we'll be on Zoom and on Facebook Live from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Tuesday evening. And I hope you can join us. Ask me anything about Stittsville that you'd like to know. Uh, we did this back in May and it was a really good, uh, really good conversation. So looking forward to doing that again on Tuesday evening. Um, Oh, cannabis. I wanted to mention cannabis. There's an application through the AGCO, the Alcohol and Gaming 
Commission of Ontario for a new cannabis retail store on Stittsville Main Street, just south of Orville, in that building that is going up from Huntington. So it'd be retail on the bottom floor and residential on the top. And a company wants a license from the government, Ontario government, to open a cannabis store. You can go to the AGCO website and share your comments there. So the city of Ottawa doesn't have a role in um, deciding which cannabis stores do or do not open. That's decided by the province. Um, there are some rules about how close together they could be or um, uh, how close they are to schools and, and so on. But uh, there, there aren't a lot of restrictions. What I usually do in my formal comments as a counselor is I, I point out that the um, the availability of cannabis really is normalizing that for a lot of youth. And we're seeing a lot of issues with youth addiction, uh, which can lead to addiction issues and mental health issues. My feedback to the province is usually, okay, if you're going to approve these cannabis stores, please put along with them some more funding for Ottawa Public Health, for education and awareness and support for addiction and mental health for youth. And also um, give us some more uh, funding for enforcement activities through bylaw and police. That'd be very helpful for us as a city to try to minimize the effects of continued availability and normalization of cannabis. So anyways, my two cents, my soapbox this morning. Uh, Beaver Tales has a special location open today. I think it's today, maybe tomorrow. Uh, but today for sure over at Hazeldean Gardens, they're doing a fundraising for the Ottawa Dragon Boat uh, Race Festival, the Ottawa Dragon Boat Festival. They're at Hazeldean Gardens, corner of Hazeldean and Stittsville, Maine, and they've got the Beaver Tail truck there. I think uh, Grant Hooker, the founder of Beaver Tails, was there earlier this, earlier this morning, so if you're looking for a snack, that'd be a good place to go. And of course, here at the uh, Village Square Park on Sundays and Thursdays, Sunday mornings, Thursday evenings, they have a weekly farmer's market going on. So if uh, we were in this spot tomorrow at this exact time, it'd be a hustling and bustling place with all sorts of uh, local vendors as part of the weekly farmer's market. Vaccines, the vaccine update, 570,000 people in Ottawa have had at least one dose. That's people 12 years and up. And that represents 66% of the adult population. So two thirds of people in Ottawa have had at least their first dose. On Monday, if you have had a first dose and you're 70 years or older, you can now uh, sign up for a second dose and you can move your date earlier. Now, a word of caution there. This is a, a problem we've been having throughout this pandemic where the province keeps expanding availability for the registrations, but is not sending us enough vaccine, not confirming enough vaccine for us to open up enough appointments. So that means on Monday morning, the province is expanding availability to 70 plus which means in theory about uh, up to 80,000 people in Ottawa could be uh, trying to get an appointment alongside all the other age groups that have yet to fully book. So anyone 12 plus, uh, the seniors 80 plus who are looking for a second dose. So it's a real problem and something that I've written to MPP Goldie Gamari about. Um, can we either <laughs> slow down on expanding that availability or get us caught up with the number of vaccination appointments um, that we need? We need that vaccine supply. Uh, Dr. Etches, Chief DeMonte, who's in charge of the vaccine rollout, and Mayor Watson, they are on the phone constantly with provincial officials trying to basically plead and, and negotiate for more vaccine supply here. There's a lot of demand here in Ottawa. That's great. It means people want to get that vaccine. Uh, we're just not getting enough supply from the province to meet that demand. So uh, hopefully that changes soon. If you have a chance, um, write to your MPP and let her know or him know. Um, that this is a concern for you and uh, we need to get our fair share of vaccines here in the city of Ottawa from the from the province. I think that's all of my updates. That was a lot of information. I'm going to, uh, as always, uh, share this on YouTube. Um, there's information about everything I talked about on my website, glengower.ca, and uh, happy to answer any questions in the comments as well. Hope you can join me on Tuesday for a counselor chat and get out there on National Fitness Day and enjoy the trails, the parks, everything in your community. Take care. Have a great weekend.